Welcome. Looks like we are live. I'm getting the go ahead. Well, welcome Wellbeats fans. My name is Kim. I'll be your host today and I'm very excited to be in studio today with one of our instructors. And today we'll be chatting with internationally known celebrity chef Daniel Green. Now, you might know him as a, an award-winning cookbook author or maybe you've seen him on TV or maybe you've even seen him on packaging in the cooking aisle at your local store, like I have. <laughs> but we're gonna chat with him because we're so excited that he's a Wellbeats instructor on the Nourish channel, and we're just gonna get to know him and find out some of his strategies, tips, and tricks. Welcome, Daniel. Thank you for having me. It's uh, been a wonderful time to be able to share some of my recipes and really uh, kind of update a few of my methods, as that always happens as a chef. You know, you're always kind of looking at which ingredients are more on trend and what plan is more on trend so it's always ever evolving so i've done it for many years now <laughs> i love it well yes i know you have a lot of knowledge to share and i know we're just scratching the surface with you on the app so um i want to encourage anybody who's joining us live to just drop any comments or questions that you have in the comment section below and i'll do my best to um, catch those and we'll ask those live but i have a few questions for us so why don't you just tell us a little bit about your background and, and what made you kind of decide to become a chef? Was Absolutely. that something you always you know, wanted to do? Well, I, I'm back to my point when I said I've done this many years, it's because I'm going to be 50 in a couple of days. So I'm kind of like thinking about that big number too much <laughs> and all the hours. That's well, happy early really birthday. <laughs> so it's been a long time. It evolved when I was a teenager and I started putting a lot of weight on and I was eating junk food and it was not good decisions. I was brought up with really good home cooking. My mum used to make every meal. I've got two brothers for our family, my dad and the five of us. But then I started putting weight on and I didn't like it when I was about 19 years old. I really felt a misfit. I felt like I, I didn't even have the energy. I didn't feel good about myself. So I went on this plan of losing weight. No kind of big grand ideas, just I wanted to lose a bit of weight. And I lost a bit of weight and I lost a bit more weight and then I got interested in food and in those days it was all about low fat food mm -hmm. like today of course you know it's all about keto and paleo and good carbs and bad carbs then it was like you could have the potato the pasta you couldn't touch fat so it yeah. changed many ways mm -hmm. but it worked for me it worked a lot and I lost about 65 pounds oh. and when I lost 65 pounds I thought I wasn't very motivated at work because like, there's something here I need to do like there's some passion that I love about and I was being quite elaborate with my food. Mm -hmm. I started to travel. I started to realize you could use other cuisines and make it exciting. Mm -hmm. So I would say my career has been based on kind of world cuisine. It's taken me all over the world. I ended up in kitchens in Hong Kong, and Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, um, across Europe. So it, it's been fascinating. I mean, never did I expect it. And it took many twists and turns. Even moving here to the US 16 years ago was an incredible different direction I didn't plan. Yeah. I love that you bring your travel kind of into your cooking, and we've seen that on the Wellbeats app. Um, so I've got to ask already early. I was going to say this to Ed, <laughs> but I got to know what is your favorite dish that you've made so far for the Wellbeats app? Because I think we're going to post it. You know, you. again, I think what goes back to it was a lovely series, and it was back to doing things that are very on trend. So I've written books over the years. My first book was almost twenty years ago. Very different ingredients. I mean, you didn't touch an avocado then, and you didn't have cauliflower rice. So my excitement was using cauliflower rice on a poke bowl. Mm -hmm. And again, poke bowls are kind of much more mainstream now. There's something that you see in more restaurants, but they've got rice and that's got calories. It's got very high carbohydrates. I do a cauliflower rice and it really tastes pretty close to a poke bowl. So that's what I love to do is you do compromise when you're going down in carbs and fat. I just want to bring it as close as possible and as easy as possible. Mm -hmm. See, if I was a Chinese chef that only did Chinese food, it can become a bit intimidating on having the right equipment and having the wok and the axe and all of the ingredients you don't see everywhere. I really just like to bring the world in on a very uh, easy basis that I kind of gauge when I write recipe books. Mm -hmm. What can I find in a medium style grocery store? And if I can find it there, then everyone can find it. Mm -hmm. And then we'll maybe use one or two ingredients you haven't used before, but I hope you like that. And then you get to cook with those a bit more. Yeah, I think that's probably my favorite part about watching your classes is just, it's so accessible and easy. Like it's just very doable. Even 
for me, who is not exactly a whiz in the kitchen, but <laughs> working well, at it. You know, again, you know, I don't come from running a Michelin star restaurant. Mm -hmm. If you're at that level, you don't want to give a five, three recipe, five minute dish because that kind of undermines what you're doing in the restaurant. I don't have that. I have cooking at home, so it's kind of getting that into people's ideas. So it is mm -hmm. quick. It is easy. They're very achievable. Mm -hmm. But it depends, of course, you know where you are um, in that business of what you're trying to create in a recipe. Yeah, I know. I love you. Kind of um, alluded to one of your tricks, which is substituting the substituting the cauliflower rice for regular rice, which really does cut down on the calories quite a bit. What are some of your other go-to tricks for um, making dishes more healthy, um, lower in fat, lower in calories? Um. I've still got the back of my mind that fat isn't good, mm -hmm. but I think satura bad saturated right. fats are not good. So that's always in the back yeah. of my mind. I say one of my tricks is I oil, oil the food, not the pan. Mm -hmm. So if you've got chicken breast or you've got a little bit of fish, if you rub a little bit of olive oil in and then you cook it, you're using a fraction compared to maybe a tablespoon that we just throw in with a recipe. Mm -hmm. Then a good non-stick pan is really good. Not that I endorse any. <laughs> <laughs> but non-stick pans do make it easier. They just mm -hmm. do. With stainless steel, you've got to have quite a lot of oil and fat. I love air fryers because you can do yeah. a lot with those. So there's a lot more uh, creative equipment that's out there. So that's mm -hmm. number one. But oiling the food is, is definitely another one. So reducing the fat that way. And then um, just being careful with the oils, for sure. Mm -hmm. And again, like you said, it's not that fat is bad, but fat is calorie dense. And so when you can limit the amount of that, that definitely cuts down the calories. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so tell me, because you said you had obviously a significant weight loss, 65 pounds. You've kept it off for now three decades. Yeah, I would say I was about 20. It took a few years. I would say yeah. um, going on to 30 years, yeah. So what's kind of your secret for, because I think it's so, you know, it's fantastic to lose weight, but to maintain it for that length amount of time, you're definitely doing something right. So what's kind of your motivation well, and tricks? Th there is a trick and it does work and it's very simple. If you can have food that tastes better than what you're having before, you'll never go back to it. So mm -hmm. if I made a fabulous beef burger with lean beef and I made an eggplant bun and I put all my flavors in it, that tastes better than a fast food three dollar burger why would you go back right. so that's the thing is developing the flavors you love and really enjoying the food mm -hmm. if you can create those flavors and that food that you love and, and that could be different for every one of us who likes what more yeah. but i think that was my key to my success is i i like my food better than i did the kind of rubbish i was eating yeah so what is kind of one of your favorite ways to add flavor or what are kind of your go-to you know because yeah well you're right if it tastes good people are going to continue to eat it so. they, they will i mean yeah. my my inspiration was in the early 90s all you heard and you still hear it today is chefs say fat is flavor fat is flavor mm -hmm. and i have gone to countries and tasted food where that wasn't the case you know most of asia particularly southeast asia mm -hmm. is street food that's fast food. Fast food doesn't mean unhealthy food. Here, fast food, when you say the word, you think of unhealthy. Right. You don't think <laughs> it's quick. Right. Uh, that's just quick, what fried food. Mm -hmm. But it's the flavors that go into those that you can be so creative with. I mean, if you take Thai food with chili and lemongrass and coriander, cilantro, all these flavors, that, there's no fat in that. There's no calories in that. It's just pure flavor. Yeah. Um, even when you go to some of the Chinese dishes and you've got a little bit of soy, even if you want to go for the gluten-free, dash a little sesame oil, uh, the Korean chili sauce, okay, it's got a little bit more of the carbs in it, you don't need much of it. Mm -hmm. When you start to find those flavors, you realize actually, no, you can make food really spicy and interesting. I mean, classic, you know, Italian food with a beautiful pomodoro sauce, which is olive oil, tomatoes, garlic, and onion, that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, some wonderful flavors go in there. So you can do it. It takes, you know, sometimes just a little bit more work to do that. And then the other thing is, it's how can you, sustain it mm -hmm. and yes you need to plan you really do because mm -hmm. this is a lifelong commitment but doesn't mean you can't come off of it i mean i have days that i don't think about it i have um, one of my books is called the monday to friday diet mm -hmm. because it's what you do on average so you certainly yeah. can you know lose weight if you're doing that on average or sustain the weight and, and have a few bad days or bad meals but it's trying to make the right choices and that's where i feel i can do this any restaurant pretty much anywhere you are traveling all those environments when you got to try and make the right decisions. Yeah. So speaking of travel, we have a question coming up here, but 
Um, first, I want to ask you, kind of, what is your secret? Because I know you do travel a yeah. lot. So, how do you kind of keep um, motivated when you're traveling, especially extensively? Yeah, I find, I find when I'm at a destination is easy. You know, hotels and restaurants, you've got all the choices. That I don't find a problem. The actual travel part of it is is difficult. If you're doing short haul, then you just got to have the right things, you know, and, and any the right things that you can. Mm -hmm. If you're on like long haul, that I do a lot of, that's a little bit harder. To, uh, but then the other thing is, airplane food is quite small portion control. Yeah. So even if you are having a little bit of the fat, you have on the carbs, you're not going to like overindulge in that. Right. Yeah. Portion control is key. There's, <laughs> so there's, there's, there's no pantry to raid. <laughs> Uh, okay, we have a couple of, or we have a question here. Uh, Mark wants to know any trips and tips and tricks on how to keep eating healthy and tasty easy and not overwhelming to prepare. I think it's again back to my recipes are always like three, four, five ingredients, mm -hmm. not overwhelmingly difficult, and they take five, ten minutes to make. Yeah. As soon as you go out of that, people don't you want to do it on a daily basis. You might do it when you're entertaining for people. I think it's to find your favorite flavors. You know, do you love uh, Asian food? Is it a particular region, or do you like? You know, trying to find out what that substitute mm -hmm. is, uh, and finding that, and then you know, just making it very easy to create. I mean, as I said, cauliflower rice is like a go-to now. You buy it in a bag, frozen, two minutes in a microwave, and you've got your base there. Right. And then you can like sear over some chicken or fish or shrimp, and then put some sauce on it. You can do it very easily right. and quickly. Such an easy substitute again if you're you've already kind of hit your carb max for the day or you know you're getting close on calories that's just such an easy fix so i love that and i never you know i've always been under this never go hungry you know you've got to find the diet or the plan that the food is okay but you can eat any amounts of it you yeah know? so it's about um I, I look there are diets out there that have been very successful that have portion control i can't do that i think people always fall off of that i mm -hmm. don't think we can sustain that that's personal so what are some of your go-to's at home? Like, I see you cook a lot <laughs> live, and you're always making something fab fabulous. Uh, what, what are some of your favorites or go-to's? I mean, luckily, again, it's because things change as in ingredients you use. So yeah. sometimes things are in vogue a little bit more, and I'm trying to use it and try it and see, you know, what, what's mm -hmm. the big, like, uh, recently, uh, there's a big thing on fluffy cakes and fluffy pancakes. So I've been making for my daughter these, you know, souffle-style pancakes <laughs> that are like really like they wobble and they're fabulous. Yeah. Uh, but what do I normally go to? I do a lot of fruit, a lot of vegetables, a lot of protein. I mean, my go-to is salmon. Salmon is my go-to protein because it has got some good fats. It does fill you up. It does taste really like it's, it's a, a fulfilling meal. Yeah. And then I play around with going a little bit with miso or a little bit more spicy Thai or even plain grilled on a salad with a real you know, easy salad uh, dressing, which I actually did on my salad this was. Yeah. Simple dressing, Dijon, vinegar, olive oil, that's it. So yeah. you know, there, there's a lot of simple, and it's interesting when you see even some of the more elaborate chefs and Michelin star, you know, they have quite simple dinners as well because they're creating all these things all the time. So I do love uh, you know, adding a little bit of spice, but I don't take you know, vast amounts of time cooking. Yeah. What's your favorite way to make vegetables? You say, my favorite way with vegetables is normally wok fried. I did a lot of work in Asia, especially China, mm -hmm. and that is, you can cook anything in a wok. Now they have bigger flames and bigger woks, they really have the heat that holds a bit more. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing nicer than crunchy vegetables rather than soggy vegetables. Yeah. So you won't see me steam too much, it's uh -huh. much more about you know on the fire, and then you're in control as you toss it and turn it. Uh, like wok fried broccoli, a little bit of oyster sauce and garlic, it's like a wow. Well, you, you can make you can make vegetables interesting, yeah. and I try because I certainly want my kids to eat vegetables. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> good. So, what um, I guess, what advice would you give to any aspiring chefs or those looking to step up their cooking game at home, like myself? What's your uh, best tips? Well, I think the tip would be the same to the chef, a chef wanting to be chef as wanting to lose weight. Is it's not all or nothing push yourself to the next boundary. It's like losing weight. If you can achieve a three, four pound weight loss, amazing. Stay there, stay on that. And then if you can go to the next level, you, you may and you can, but don't like, over exceed your expectations. Like don't pull out the most elaborate souffle dish and make that the first time. 
get a little bit into it, you know, get into it easy. So baby steps, mm -hmm. but stay at those levels. And each time you achieve something, and I go back to, I mean, let's say you're doing Thanksgiving cooking. The first Thanksgiving turkey you made, what did you do? You called mum, right? Okay. Yeah. So you call <laughs> mum and you say, how do I do it? It's second nature when you've done your 10,000 hours in anything in life. If you've done your 10,000 hours on, uh, you know, in a kitchen or live TV or anything you've done, it, it just becomes natural. So if you've done 30 Thanksgiving dinners, 31's gonna be pretty easy. So yeah. just get the confidence, get in there and cook a little and you know, yeah. try, try and test out your confidence. That's a good tip. All right, we've got another question. Uh, Tiana wants to know, are, um, what tips do you have for parents to help encourage kids to eat healthy? I mean, I find it, it depends what age that is. When the kids are involved with cooking, they eat it. Like my little one can make something that tastes god awful. <laughs> <laughs> and she's throwing everything in it. But she made it and she's gonna eat it. Now if I made it, just be oh, it's not very nice there. Right. Um, actually, she's the more compliment of the family to me. <laughs> but, I know what that's like. <laughs> but, um, uh, complimentary. But I would say that when kids are involved cooking it, they really do want to try. So I think that's my biggest step. Mm -hmm. And also use ingredients they like, and you can hide a few ones along the way as well. Right, yeah. And age appropriate, do you have like tips for that? Uh, so what kind of skills could you give at different ages? Uh, absolutely, I mean my 18 year old, there's certain foods she won't have. I don't tell her when she's finished, I tell her. And then she's like, oh my God, I can't tell you completely, you made me have that. Uh, but it is, it, it is, it's expanding their palates. And, the problem with, and I'll go back, I don't have time, very quickly on the kids' menu. Mm -hmm. When I grew up, a kids' menu was not mac and cheese, pizza, sliders. It was a smaller portion of what mum and dad had. Right. So if we went to an Italian restaurant, the kids' menu just had a smaller pasta. Yeah. It didn't mean it was, you know, kind of junk food. Right. So we're not giving our kids enough time to taste and try. And my eldest, when she was little, did travel to Asia many times. And I can't tell you the palate she developed from. Yeah, and I think that's the key point, is taste and try, taste because and try. kids need to just continue to taste and try. Absolutely. And they can be exposed to it many times, and then finally decide that they But like it's it. how you do it, so yes. it's the kind of, if they, you know, if they're very little, it's like, no, no, it's only for the adults, then they want it, and then, you know, you can kind of get them into it, so there's a little bit of, a little bit of mind. Yeah. Mind All right, any other questions? anyone that wants to go into a regime and a plan you've got to make it exciting and fun it's never about oh no I've got to do this you just think of what you can have I was once handed a, a book many years ago to write which was healthy eating for lower cholesterol mm -hmm. and I didn't want to come to it as a, a doctor would say you can't have this you can't have this you can't have this I want to say you can have this you can have this you can have this so yeah. uh, turn that glass is half empty into something exciting there are lots of different uh, great opportunities you can have in food. Do a little research, have a little look out there, find the flavors that you like. There's, I mean, in today's world, it's so easy to find a skinny version of something or a lower fat version or a lower carb um, or something that helps you when you're working out. So all these you know, tools are available. Mm -hmm. Well, I think exciting and fun is what Daniel specializes in. <laughs> so I'm so excited to get more content from him on the Nourish channel. And of course, you can follow him uh, on Facebook and Instagram and get all kinds of good info there too. But, um, well, we're just excited to have you as part of the Well Beats uh, team. Oh, thank and you. It's been we, fun. Really nice. Thank you for joining us in studio today. Pleasure. So I guess that's it, Well Beats fans. We'll. Uh, We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.